What's up everybody? We're going to talk about how to properly set up a real estate geo farm and how to grow it. Coming up. What's up? Steve with Steve Invest, helping real estate agents, brokers, and investors grow their businesses with a path toward financial freedom. Yeah, I'm going to put a link below for a checklist. Um, this way it just kind of keeps you on target. You want to utilize this checklist because consistency is king. Obviously use it as a guide and you're probably going to change things around, but at least it gives you some sort of format to go ahead and follow. Again, I'll put that link below for you guys. Number two, consistency. As mentioned, use that checklist. Um, but consistency, look, if you guys are actively farming a community and you're mailing, say, every single month and then months eight and nine, you don't mail anything because you got busy, distracted, whatever the case is, and they're going to think I was expecting this piece to come in by the fifth of every month and I didn't receive it. So what, what's going on with Joe Smith? Is he going out of business? I haven't received a mailer in a couple months. Something's going on. So just make sure if you take this on, be consistent. Tip number three is do this forever. I've made a big mistake. I, you know, I was usually uh, flipping the property that I was living in and every time I was living in an area usually I would try to stay for two years this way um, after I flipped that property that there was no uh, no taxes on the gain I would always try to market to the areas that I was living in those became my farm areas but unfortunately every time I moved many times I would stop mailing to those communities because I'd be I, I'd go ahead and set myself up into a new community and I know I left a lot of money on the table there Number four, work where you live. As mentioned, you know, if you're going to set up a geo farm area, you might want to uh, set up the, the geo farm where you actually live. There are several benefits associated with it. Um, obviously, number one is the travel time. You know, if you're, you know, even walking to a property that you're going to go do a listing appointment on or, um, you know, it's right around the corner and you have to show a buyer, it makes your life so much easier. So just, uh, it's going to save you time, energy, effort, and money, travel, gas, and so forth. Another thing is you're seen throughout the community, especially if, it, if you have any kind of marketing or uh, decals on your car and so forth, or if you're uh, actively walking the community for exercise and so forth, you start to get recognition within your community. So um, that's another benefit for working where you live. Get involved in community activities. Again, the more that you're out and about, the more that you're showing face, the more that you're networking, it's only gonna benefit you. If you're inside of an association, consider actually running for the board as well. I can tell you, um, one of the first boards I ever got on, it was only a community of 89 units. And uh, I was only, I bought that condo, I was only there for maybe two or three months and uh, got on the board fairly quickly. There was a spot that was open, I jumped in, and immediately we started gaining uh, market share for listings in that community almost immediately because of my exposure there. Um, you know, it only took a few, uh, a handful of months before really everybody knew who I was uh, just because of that board position. So if you are in an association, consider getting on a board. Another thing working where you live is consumer confidence. You know, if you have people that are um, listing their properties, you know the neighborhood, you know the community, who's best to sell it is you being the realtor and resident of the community. Number five, if the community that you live in sucks or it's not the price point you want or you know you just don't want to do the neighborhood that you live in, then that's fine. Maybe circle around and find something in the perimeter around your neighborhood. Um, you know, look for initially three to five hundred doors. Just find a community nearby this way it's easy to get to. Number six, study and research. You know, if you're gonna be the market expert in this neighborhood you need to know what's going on in the market at all point in time and also if you live in a community and you're like uh, you know i want to make i want to make this area my farm area but you have really no turnover and you know it's an established neighborhood and nobody's selling the properties then it's probably not going to be an ideal community for you so you want to find a community that there's a certain level of turnover at least six percent number seven is consistently marketing to your farm area so even outside of a mail campaign there's a lot of things that you should be doing within your farm area it's going to be on that checklist that'll put the link down below as well for you but some other stuff are uh, door knocking for open houses door knocking for uh, when you just list a property or just sold a property um, obviously the mail campaign, phone campaign. If you want uh, geo area, geo phone numbers, you can actually click the link below. I got an affiliate link for Red X. Uh, they actually provide phone numbers for um, really any, any location, any community that you guys want so you can get on the phones and, and call instead of door knock as well. 
Um, make sure you get on social media groups like Next Door Neighbor, Facebook groups. Uh, consider even creating a Facebook group for your neighborhood as well so people can join in and contribute. And also something else that a lot of uh, successful real estate agents do for geofarm areas is an annual barbecue so this can be held at you know an event uh, clubhouse or an event center in your neighborhood or even at your house number eight to keep this machine and everything rolling and and uh, really working without you putting a lot of time and effort and energy into it consider hiring a part-time uh, assistant maybe even five hours a month could get the job done twenty dollars per hour that's a hundred dollars a month you can actually pass this expense along to other contributors to your marketing piece which we're going to talk about it's in that next video that i have for you guys as well um, but you know the five hours a month could could get somebody to handle all the uh, flyer design for you and making sure that thing gets out on month, on time, every single month on your behalf without you having to do anything. Number nine, let it breathe. You know, a farm is like any other farm. You're planting seeds, it takes time. So, you know, if you're into this two, three, five, seven, eight months and you're not getting anything, it's okay. Uh, consider looking at your flyer design. Is it catchy? Do you have a good call to action? But other than that, it does take time. It takes time for people to call. And again, this is a long-term play. This is gonna be something you're gonna be marketing, hopefully forever for the entire duration of your real estate career. So give it time, let it breathe. And number 10, my most favorite. If you've been following this channel for a while, I'm kind of frugal in the sense where I wanna keep expenses as low as possible, especially personal expenses, but even business expenses put in a little bit of creativity and you can have this whole monthly mail campaign go out every single month for free. The next video I go into complete detail on exactly how to do that. Check it out and I'll see you there.